I'm going to start us off in prayer and you gotta welcome everybody first and tell yeah, them. Yeah, welcome to our Friday night service no, on Wednesday Bible night's class. Bible class and uh I'm Jared Coma and I'm going to start us off in prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for the study we're going to have. Thank you for all the things that you're going to teach us today, God. Thank you for our school. Thank you for teaching the teachers. Thank you for everything that you have done, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jarek. Jarek Palmer, thank you. Hi, thank you, my dear. So good evening, everybody. I'm so excited. Bible class has such an exciting buzz nowadays. And first of all, I want to thank, come here, grandbaby. Come here. This is my grandbaby. This is Eliza Marshall. I want to thank Eliza for pointing out to me earlier that Everybody will be able to see me very well because I'm wearing my neon green shirt. And when she saw me in the dark, she said, Grandpa. <laughs> so she said, she, she said she can even see me in the dark. So thank you, Grandpa. You're welcome. So I, sh I should wear this on dark nights, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Anyway, um, wise guy. So, let, hey, let's start with a quick song. We sang this today at, at, our, at prayer for school. I'll start it off in, in a key that's good for you children too, okay? Let's just sing a couple of verses of this. Um, let's see. Lord, I believe. Go ahead, y'all. Lord, I believe. I'm gonna stand right here on your word, yours. I believe. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, Lord. I believe, Lord, I believe, I'm gonna stand right here on your word, cause I believe, mm -hmm. come on Vincent, help me sing it, come on Javier, come on, Lord, I believe, you sing it like me, this. Lord, I believe, I'm gonna stand right here on your word, cause I believe. Sing it again. You sing it. You take over now. You don't need me. Go ahead. Lord, I believe. Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Lord, I believe. I'm going to stand right here on your word because I believe. Sing it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Oh, my God. Here on your word, cause I believe. You believe the word of God? Okay. All right, I know you do. Have a seat, gentlemen. Thank you for helping me. I just felt like singing that. Praise God. So let's get right into our Bible class so that we can utilize all the time we have. And we're going to pick up right where we left off last week. You know that we're going through the um, pastor's commentary of the Bible, starting right from the top. And we're going to go as far as the Holy Spirit tells us to go with these Bible classes. Who knows? We might go all the way through Revelation. And if we go at the pace of uh, the Palmas in, <laughs> in, in Proverbs, um, we'll, be, we'll be quite some time in this. But that's okay. I'm just joking. I'm teasing. All right. Let's see. So where do we leave off last week? All right. We said... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me see. <laughs> Page two... Let me see now. We talked about firmament, okay, and water, yes. And we talked about kinds, mm-hmm, yes. I see. Okay, here we are. So number nine on page two, that's where we, we're we starting tonight. That's where we what we didn't get to last week. Mm-hmm, got it. Number nine on page two. Everybody ready? So um, that is, we're in Genesis 1, of course, so you need to have your Bibles ready, all right? So Genesis 1, verse 16. I need a pen. Anybody have a pen? Just to, uh, I use it as a pointer, actually. 
Was that you, grandbaby, making all that noise? All right, thank you. Genesis 1, verse 16. Can, how about one of the young people? Um, Jarek, do you have your Bible? Do you, have, you don't have your Bible? Can, can you turn to Genesis 1, verse 16 for me? And read that for me, sir. Nice and loud so you can, the mics can pick you up from way back there. And God made two great lights, the greater light, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Okay. He made the stars also. That's where we are. So, um, young people, you already know God made the stars because he created everything. By the way, how long did it take God to create everything, Javier? Seven, ah, six days. It took him six days and he rested on the seventh day. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask my daughter, Antoinette. She's like, me, father? Yeah. So why did it take God six days? Because he wanted it to be six days. God could have done this in six minutes. He could have done it in an instant because he is all powerful and he can do anything. There's a, I believe this is a Greek word. I was going to say a Greek word. I think it is Greek, but there's a Greek word you hear all the time that means all powerful and it's called omnipotent, omnipotent. In Greek, omni means all and potent means power. He has all power. He's omnipotent. That's like saying omnipotent. Okay, everybody, just wanted to throw that out there on your table. But um, because God is omnipotent, Tolliver, he could do anything, and he could have created the world in, you name it. Go ahead, Tolliver, in what? A second. In a second, a if he wanted to. A millisecond, right? But he chose to do it in six days, and within those six days, he created the stars as well. All right? Now, I want to look at a verse. Turn to Psalm verse um psalm 147 verse 4 as a reference for that he made the stars now genesis 1 16 doesn't say this but we find this in psalm 147 4 he made the stars and he is so amazing he called them all by name he gave every single star a name now i'm not talking about the greek names that we have today when i say greek names you know we have Orion, and oh, the, the, we have names for all, you know, all the stars in the solar system, all that, right? I'm not talking about that's what God did. God called them personal names, every single one of them. How many stars are there? Somebody raise your hand and tell me that. I know you don't know the exact number. Tolliver. Billions. I believe there are trillions that, that we know of, that we know of. There are trillions of stars. Am I correct? I believe I'm correct about that. I haven't, I didn't look into that for this lesson, but trillions of stars. And can you believe he named every single one of them and he knew each name? You think he forgot their names? You do? No. Oh, all right. I didn't hear you. I heard some tiny little no's here and there. Do you think he forgot their names? No, sir. All right. I'm going to ask my daughter right there. Prove it. Give me some scripture to prove that God is not likely that he forgot the names of the stars. And I know you're right. right yeah, I'm at you right now. Um, um, brother. Something else that doesn't have to do with stars, but it has to do with oh, something okay. else that'll back it up. Yes. It says the hairs on your head are numbered. He knows the hairs on your head. Listen, I used to have a lot, a lot of hair. Okay, I used to say this to my Sunday school students years ago. God knows the numbers of hair on, hairs on your head, and he knows how many I have lost. Okay, the, the hairs on your head are numbered. But can you fathom that? Just in this room alone, everybody in this room, he knows how many hairs are on your head. And he knows how many are left when you comb your hair and, and some fall out in the sink. I'm serious. You know, naturally, you, you look and there's a few hairs. In this. He knows how many you still have after that happens. He knows how many you have after you get a haircut. That is, the, the mind can't even contain that. And he knows the numbers of hairs on the head, on the heads of every, of all people in the entire world. 
So certainly he could name all the stars and remember their names. You know, do you know why? My son, Deshaun, can you just your thoughts? I just had a thought. What are your thoughts as to why God would be able to do that? Besides the fact that he's all powerful. Oh, yes. Well, think of it in this way. Look at it in this way. What would it take us to be able to hold that, hold just vast amounts of information? Think about computers. I know I'm putting you on the spot because I think, think about what do computers need to be able to hold? They need, they, exactly, those are the words, but they need an incredible capacity for information. God has an infinite capacity to hold knowledge. Infinite. Young people, do you know what that word infinite means? Yes, it means there's no limit to it. There's no, your brain can only hold so much information. Now, I've heard the 10% thing. Everybody has heard that, that we only use 10% of our brain. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Let's put it this way. I don't doubt it. You understand? I'm not saying, oh, that's not true. I'm saying I don't know if that number is accurate. I don't know where that number came from, but I certainly don't doubt it, right? So even our own brains um, that God created, because we were made in his image and in his likeness. Our own brains have an incredible capacity to hold information. Well, God, but our brains are not infinite. That's what I wanted to say. I mean, there's a limit to how much we can learn. God's mind, his capacity to contain information is unlimited. It's infinite. It's infinite. Uh, Daughter, didn't a verse say his ways are past finding out? Mm -hmm. Scripture said that he's past finding, meaning you can't ever learn all there is about God. Ever. I'm talking eternity. So let's go forward. Uh, let's look at that Psalm 147, verse 4. Anybody have it and can read it? Thank you, daughter. He telleth the numbers of the stars. Mm -hmm. He calleth them all by their name. Look at this. He knows the exact number. We, get, we estimated in the trillions. <laughs> That's the best we can do as human beings. No, no. He didn't have to estimate. He knows how many he created. He knows the number of the stars. And then he named every single last one of them. This is interesting. Why do you, just, just for fun, just for fun, why do you think, I'm going to put you on the spot since you teased me about my neon shirt. <laughs> Why do you think God named the stars? Mm -hmm. Just for fun. Go ahead, grandbaby. Smarty. Because he wanted to. <laughs> because he wanted to. Why do you name stuff? Who said that? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. It shows ownership. It makes them personal. God created the stars and then named each one just to show that this is mine. All right, let's move forward to, that's number nine, all right? Number 10, verses 20 through 22. Um, Edmund Jr., could you please read those verses for me? Genesis 1, um, verses 20 through 22, and let's see what our commentary commentary says about that. You said 20 through 22? Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Genesis 1, 20 through 22. Okay. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let, and let fowl multiply in the earth. Okay, now we dealt with this last week about God creating the birds out of water, out of the water. But I want to deal with the second point in these verses tonight. So you see where it said, um, be fruitful and multiply. First of all, obviously, well, we're going to deal with that soon. So be fruitful and multiply. Why do you think, now this may seem like a, a simple question, so I don't want you to get tri tripped 
and be like, duh, everybody knows that. Why do you think God would say to them after he created them, be fruitful and multiply? Yes. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Jarek. Yes, he's correct. Let's help him to make that a little more, yes, in depth. Yes. You're both on the right track. Let me ask, put it, let me help you with this. Did God tell the stars to do that? Yeah. Why not? He made not enough, but he made all that he wanted, right? So now you finish it. Why would he say that to the animals that he created? You know, the, the sea the fowls and the sea creatures. Why would he say that to them? Yes. Now it doesn't. You, you're absolutely right. I want to check something before I fully answer that. Let me see. That's all right. I won't worry about that. That's going to keep falling. Don't even bother. I doubt if that's going to stay up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Let's see. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. Yep. You're right. I had to double check that. God did not make, <laughs> see, I told you. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Thank you. God did not make every single animal and species that would populate the earth. Do you understand that? He didn't make every single thing. When you make dinner for somebody, when you make pizza, when you make, I don't know, whatever it is, pancakes, you make enough for everybody. You make a whole bunch However, how, however many um, pieces or whatever that everybody is going to need, right? God did not do that. He made kinds. You're going to keep seeing that word over and over again. He made kinds. And then he gave, first of all, he made kinds. And what did he do? He, adults, he, he put their seed in them and, cre and established a process by which they could multiply and then he said you multiply and fill the earth god did not make all of the animals like he'd made all of the stars do you young people understand that yes, he made kinds so he made last week we talked about um canine the canine kind what canine what came from canine kind wow. dogs, dogs wolves. wolves hyenas um, foxes, uh, all of that. Yes. And yes. Wait, I heard something that didn't go with it. But anyway, you got the point. All right. Now he also made feline kinds. What came from felines? Feline kinds. Cat, <laughs> cheetahs, cats, tigers, lions, house cats, bobcats, etc. He also made, now I'm going to I'm going to throw <laughs> See that outside cat, alley cat. All right. Okay. Now, he also made something that I'm going to throw this one out. I didn't mention this one last week. All right, Edmund Jr. I told you this before. So he made bovine kinds. What came from that? Bunnies. No. <laughs> no. Oh, Cattle. Hey, that's my daughter Geneva. Bovine. Yeah, yes, cows, cattle, um, what bulls? Uh, not horses. Oh, wait, wait, what? Okay, no, 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 not wildebeest, not pigs. Okay, but you get the point. He made kinds. He made kinds, and shh, shh, and whatever that first kind was, he didn't make a hundred or a thousand or a million of them. I don't know if he made only one. Scripture does not indicate that. It would appear so. It seems like he only made one of each thing, of each kind. The scripture actually does not say that, so I'm not going to say that. But whatever the small number was that he made, whether it was one or a few, okay, then they, I'm sure he only needed to make one. Deshaun, why would he only need to make one male and female of each kind? Yes, but 
what would be, listen, Chief knows me this. Everything I do, I do in multiples because I learned over the years from when I was young, you never want to be caught in a jam where, oh, I only had one of those and it broke. Now what am I going to do? I only had one idea. And we, we call it don't put all your eggs in one basket. Why would God only have needed to make a male and female of every kind? And that was fine. Somebody else help him. God doesn't need more than what mm, eggs in. No, that's he not the answer. He did, he he made made it perfectly. No, yes, but why wouldn't why would there be no problem? Because there was no sin. There was no sin, so was there no was death. no death. So if he made just one of each, it was fine. They weren't there was no risk. That's why I gave you the hint about, you know, I need. I need to make sure I have at least two of these because if I break one or one fails me, but you see, God could make one of each kind or a male and female of each kind and be perfectly safe. What you said was true. First of all, they would be perfect. You said that daughter and somebody else, they would be perfect. But also there was no risk that, oh man, I only made two and one's sick now. <laughs> one's going to die. No. So um, the I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable based on scripture and based on that, that God made one of each kind, one male and female, one male and one female of each kind. And then he said to that kind, to all that he made, be fruitful and multiply and populate the earth, fill the earth. Okay, everybody, everybody comfortable with that? Yes, All right. Praise God. Let's see. Now, what do we have next? So that was verses 20 through 22. Let me see. I'm reading letter B down here. Here again in verse 21 and also verse 24 is the significant word kind. Now, we just dealt with that. So we're moving on from that. Page 3. Number 11, verse 26. I wonder if my beautiful wife over there would read verse 26 for us. Genesis 1, 26, please. Do you have your Bible? I didn't even ask you. Okay, go ahead. 1, 26. Mm -hmm. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, as you can see, she's not reading from the King James Version. And I'm the one who, I'm the one who bought her that Bible, so it's my fault. Uh, hmm? The New King James. No, it's not New King James. No. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Sorry. that's all right, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, that's fine, honey. Symphony, read that in King James for me since we're all using the King James. And God said, let us make man in our Um, one of the children, what is he talking about creeping things? What did God mean creeping? I think Isaiah's hand went up first and then Isaiah, uh, Olivia was next. Yes, Isaiah, what creeping things is God talking about? Animals. No, how about oh, Olivia was next? Bugs. Bugs. She like bugs. <laughs> the way she says she's like bugs. <laughs> okay, you're right. Bugs and crawly things. And, uh, insects. Insects, God, yes. Did you know God even made insects? Did you know that? Did you ever think about that, children? God even made insects. He sure did. He sure did. Um, hmm. I could get into... Should I even... That's interesting. There's a, there's a purpose for everything God did. Why, do, why would God make insects? I don't even know if we can really answer that, but that's something to think of. Why would God think that the earth would need insects? Let's just play with that for a minute and see. Yes, son. Yes, son. <laughs> He's like, I, yeah. I know it. I know. Me too. Me too. Yes, Tolliver. It's because of some animals, like, oh, I mean, not animals, insects like bees, baby 
refurbish the plants and flowers and they help with populating with with reproducing the beautiful flowers and all of the very good Tolliver. yes isaiah i was going to say because some it, some of them are healthy they are healthy and they are helpful i know that and i understand what you mean about post sin i agree thank you that was a those are good answers that's i'm sorry okay i didn't no that's what yes yes even post sin son there still would have been waste on the earth. You understand? So they keep the earth clean. They, they, they help keep the earth clean. Isn't God amazing? You see that? What do you call that little machine you have traveling around here on the floor? The, Jojo. Jojo. Okay. It's just like God created to do the job that Jojo does. And Jojo's just, I don't know if, how it's just roaming around here. And sometimes it bumps my foot and all that. God created live beings to keep the earth clean and neat. Imagine that. God is brilliant. He's brilliant. You know what we would do? We would create everything and we would do a really good job at it. I've done this many times. You have too. We'd do a really good job at it. And then along the way we'd say, oh, wow, I need something to, to keep this clean. And then we'd come up with that. And then later we'd say, oh, you know what? We need uh, something to do that. God had it all in his mind from the very beginning. You know what I thought of when I said that? Jeremiah. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 1 for me, son. I believe it's Jeremiah chapter 1 that says, Before the earth was formed. Well, before I formed you in your mother's womb. Let's talk about that. Young people, is this fun? Yes, sir. All right. Is it? Yeah. Read it for me, son, nice and loud. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. I believe it's first. Wh wh what's the verse I'm looking at? Verse 5. Who said, man, you're some smart kids. Wow. Go ahead, verse 5, according to our young Mr. Palmer. <laughs> Jared Palmer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. Go ahead. Verse. Oh, you have it already, Jarek? Okay. You read it for me. You had it first. Good nice and loud. Wow, think about that. God had your whole life already. It was already in view, the whole, your whole entire life. Just like at creation, he had the whole picture, the whole plan. He didn't need to create insects later after he was like, oh, wow, this place is a mess. No, he had it all planned out. And some of us, we had all kinds of wrong turns in our lives and bad decisions and, you know, silly choices we made. God, he took all of that into account from the very beginning. He saw, there's another verse, which I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. It doesn't say these exact words, but it says he sees the end from the beginning. He sees the end from the beginning. Your whole life, son, and all of us, you look back on your life and you see all kinds of crooks and turns and like false starts and bad moves. You're like, oh man, that was a mess. God saw the whole thing and he took it all into account when he was planning your life. He took it all into account. Isn't that something? Praise God. That's the way he created the world because he is that amazing. He's that brilliant. He has that kind of capacity for knowledge and information. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking this. Let me just keep going because I'm thinking of so many things. I will, I'll say this one last one. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. But I'm going to use just the people in this room. I'm not even going to use the whole world, all right? I usually, I usually do this with the whole world. Let's just take the people in this room. I, I prayed today. Did you pray today, daughter? Yes, sir. And I bet you did, chief, and I bet you prayed today. I bet my wife prayed. All of us, we were praying today. I guarantee you many of us were praying at the same time today. Do you think so? Yes. We didn't take turns. We, plus, there are more people in here than there have been hours today. 
So I guarantee you, many of us were praying at the same time. Do you know when you prayed, God was focused entirely on you? As though you were the only person speaking to him right then. Even though 10 of us could have been speaking to him at the same time. But he focused entirely on you. And listened personally to you and answered your prayer at the same time he was listening to and answering the prayers of 10 other people. Now multiply that by everybody on earth who prayed today. What a God. What a God. Son, it makes me think of all this nonsense. Oh, this is a God, and that's a God. And Molech, and Baal, and some stump of wood, and some big, fat, silly belly man. You know what I mean? Um, they call Buddha. Please. Jehovah is amazing. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Mm, let's, wow. Woo, my head is, that boggles the mind. Is there anyone else in existence who has that kind of power, ability, capacity? No. Children, is there anyone else? No, sir. No, sir. There's no personage in existence. I'm going to separate them two, fellas. I'm, I'm just sitting over here like. <laughs> there's, 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 there's no. <laughs> There's no kind, there's no other being in existence who could govern the universe the way he does. Let's go on, because that's just wonderful. That Let me stay here for a second. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What should that invoke in us? One word. Yes, but no. That's yes, but that's not where what I want. Conviction? No. All of that's true, but no. What should that invoke in us? Yes? Sin? No, definitely not sin. That's okay. Confidence? Co you go on the right track. Give faith. Hmm. To know that Jehovah is that. What? What do I say he is? <laughs> is that great? That amazing? That complete. that complete? That should invoke in us complete confidence, complete faith. That of course he can take care of me. Look, look, look at his history. Look at his ability. Of course he can take care of me. I heard you talking about that in Sunday school Sunday in a, in a way. Of course he can take care of me. Of course he can heal me. Of course he can meet my needs. Of course he's, he do, he's not going to let me down. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to let me down. He has complete ability. Oh, woo. All right, now we can move on. Okay, that was number 11. Oh, now we didn't look at, actually look at my note, my commentary. So... We see here in verse 26, the first mention of the Trinity. Um, what is that? How, how do we see that evidence? Yes. Yes, you're right. That's the Trinity. But what in that verse, number 26? Because by the way, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. The Bible never uses that word. All of a sudden, God says, let us. All of a sudden, this word us appears out of nowhere. That is the first mention of the Trinity. And Tolliver, who is this us that God is talking to or referring to? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, you, you're absolutely right. And we have always said that. And up until last week, I never would have corrected you. But I'm going to correct you tonight. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Father, the Word. Jesus wasn't the Son yet. He had not become a son yet. The Father, the Word, and the Trinity. I mean, thank you, and the Trinity. Thank you very much. Then the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, number 12, verse 27. Any takers? Oh, verse 27. Somebody start reading it for me, please. So God created man in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay. So, let's see what my note is. God here, in, in other words, God in this verse refers to the Trinity. Father, Word, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, I even wrote it there. I didn't know I wrote that. I wrote these notes. Go, these notes go back to 2017 and beyond. Wow. I didn't realize that I was even thinking of that uh, years ago. But anyway, the word God here is not talking about this a single individual. It's talking about the one God, but the three persons, the Trinity. Son, when it says, verse 27, when it says God created man in his own image. All right. Wait a minute. Let me use this. In his own image and in the image of God created he him. What gives me the impression that he, the Trinity is referred to there because it says he and him and a singular pronoun. Is that a pronoun, children? Yes, sir. All right. You sure? Yes, sir. Okay. Levels three and four, devoted ministry school. Anyway, why would I get the impression that that's talking about the Trinity? In verse, in the previous verse, he said that. He said, let us make man in our image. But then the very next verse, it says, so God went ahead and did that. He made man in his image. So he's talking about the Trinity. He said us. So when it says he and him, it's referring to that one unit, which is three persons. One unit, one God, which is three persons. I've said this before. Um, don't burn your brain out trying to interpret that and understand it. Listen, there's nothing on earth like it. There's nothing else, any, any place like it. There's nothing in existence where you can have one unit in three persons. That's not possible. It's only possible with God. I've heard preachers in past years try to explain that in all kinds of ways. I've heard people use, they say it's like an egg, you know, and you have one egg, but it's a shell, yolk, and white. No, it's not like an egg. It's not like anything else. There are some things we are going to have to take on faith and say, yes, it is so because the Bible says it's so and because God can do anything and it's true of him because the Bible says it's true of him. And the Trinity is one of those things. I recommend to you, okay, to stop trying to decipher the Trinity and explain it and give examples, say, well, it's like, and I, I've heard them compare to us. They say, and it's like, man, you know, we are, what is it? Mind, soul, and body. I forgot three other things. Listen, leave it alone. It's up to you, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to say God in three persons, one God, three persons, Father, Word, Holy Spirit. That's what I'm going to say. And accept it as that. How is it possible? The same. How is it possible? The same way that it's possible for God to create everything in six days. The same way it's possible for a woman, a young young lady, to to become expectant and not go through the human process that creates that. And you know, and by the Holy Spirit overshadowing her, overshadowing her. That's how it's possible. It's possible by the same method that God used to open the Red Sea. That's how it's possible. It's possible because it is. And if Jehovah can't be God in three persons, then he can't do anything else in this book. And we need to end this Bible class. In fact, we need to drop this whole thing. Because if he can't do it all, he can't do any of it. And that's something we need to remember in our lives. Not just in our teaching. Okay, God never, his hands are never shackled. He never, he said to Moses, and we're going to see this later when we get into Exodus. He said to Moses one time, when Moses doubted something that God promised, all right, when Moses questioned, I won't say he doubted, he, but he said, God, how are you going to do that? How is that possible? God said, Moses, has my arm waxed short? In other words, I, I've lost some of my power. <laughs> I can do anything. I can do anything I want to do. Jehovah can do anything that it pleases him to do. Yes, he can. If a 
virgin, children of virgin is a young lady who has never had a physical experience with a man, the older children. All right? If a virgin can become expectant and give birth to a child, then a woman who has no womb at all can become expectant yes, and give birth to a child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that's what Jehovah wants, mm -hmm. if good. that's what he wants, mm -hmm. uh, or a woman who has never been able to have children ever can suddenly have one at 90 years old, if that's what Jehovah wants. Or a man who was born blind can suddenly see late in his life if that's what Jehovah wants. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. sure. Jehovah can do anything he wants to do. Why do I speak his name Jehovah so much all, all the time, children? Why do I do that? Yes. Because now and then people refer to God as anything. Yes, that chair can be God <laughs> in, our, in, in, in our society today. All right? It used to be when we were growing up, daughter, when we were growing up, you could say God. Everybody knew what you meant when you said God. Not anymore. Listen, we're talking about Jehovah, the God of the Bible. And we're talking about Jesus Christ, his son. That's who we're referring to. Okay? But he can do anything he wants to do at any time if it pleases him to do it. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Praise God. All right. Let's see what's next. Number 13, that's still verse 27. All right, um, Tolliver, please read number 13. Not the verse, but number 13. God made only male and female. Need I say, I'm going to put it this way, need I say more? <laughs> Do I need to say anything else? No. God made male and female. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what nonsense or what lies the devil has um, instigated mm -hmm. in this generation. In our levels three and four school classes, we're talking about pronouns among many other things. All right? Listen, children, you're going to hear all kind of foolishness nowadays um, about pronouns. Vincent, you're really struggling with that Bible and that binder, boy. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> He's juggling those. Um, Children, you're going to hear all kinds of things about pronouns. You're going to hear these words, the, the word pronoun used all the time. Listen, that's of the devil. That's demonic, okay? I don't care what pronoun you think you can call yourself. God made male and female and not one thing else. Not one thing else. Else. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Praise God. Let's keep going. Number number 14. Verse 28. What does verse 28 have for us? Can somebody read number 14 for me? How about you, Symphony? Number 14. Nice and loud, okay? Not the verse, but the note here. That's verse 20. Actually, let's read the verse first. I'm sorry. Read verse 28 in Genesis 1. Then read the note, okay? And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay, before you read the note, because there's something that's not in the notes that I want to address. What is this dominion we, we're talking about in that verse, children? You see the word dominion. Yes, yes. We're talking about Adam's dominion over the earth? Yes. He's mankind's dominion over the earth. One of you adults, expand on that. Give me more of, of that. Lordship over the earth, control, charge, exactly. Adam was supposed to represent God on earth. Did you know that? He was, God made man in his own image and in his own likeness, okay? Meaning image, God made man to look like him. Image is how you look. 
Okay, now we know God is a spirit and the Bible says that. But the Bible talks about God having hands, right? Does it say that? All right. Um, and doing things with his hands. So God created man with hands to do things. Creative things with his hands. Didn't God give us the ability to create with our hands? Yes. yes. And the Bible talks about God having eyes to see. So naturally, if we're going to look like God, we're going to be in his image, right? He's got to give us what? Eyes. Eyes to see. To see. So he gives us eyes to see. And the Bible talks about God having ears to hear, right? Yes. So he had to give us ears to hear, ears to hear and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Now, that's the image. So we look like God. Okay? Um, then, I just thought of something. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. When we get to heaven, do you think that we're going to see beings that be like, oh, wow. They don't have arms and legs and feet and hands and eyes here. It's a whole different look. This is, un wow. Do you think we're going to see that? No, we're not. No, we're not. We're going to see, I'm not going to get deep into this tonight, but we're going to see beings that look exactly like us, except with glorified bodies. Mm, I got to go here. Somebody prove it for me. I, that's, that's so vague. I feel guilty even for saying that to you, but give it a shot. See if you can follow my train of thought. Patterns. Think Patterns. Think patterns. Da -da 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 -de -de -de. No, the <laughs> backside of the mountain. Okay, come on. Think pattern. Has, in other words, I was saying we were made in the image of God, so we look like they do in heaven. Let's put it that way, right? Mm -hmm. Even though in heaven they have a glorified body, we'll have a glorified body. And then I said, somebody give me proof of that from scripture. And as a hint, I said, think patterns. I know that's really vague. I'm just trying to... How about an Our Father? Our Father. Say it again? How about an Our Father? No. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Because that is really vague, really. <laughs> what? Yeah. What would you say? <laughs> Jesus is an example. Of, what do you mean? Of, um, of a glorified... His body was glorified... Um, but, but he got glorified here. You're on the right track, but he was here already. Okay, I'll help you. Um, Deshaun, were we talking last night, probably too loud, actually. No, were we talking last night about did beings ever come from heaven to earth at any time? Yes. yes. And give me an example of some things we mentioned last night. Three strangers who were obviously two of which were definitely angels, all right, and one of which was definitely Jesus, came to visit Abraham. And Abraham yeah. did no, what? You really was gonna want it to go. go <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. That was so vague. I'm sorry. I told you I felt guilty. But when Abraham saw them, was he like, what, what are these? Did they look funny? He didn't even know they were angels. All right, now, oh, I got the chills. Come on, son. Don't shame me. Don't shame your father. Peter. Think Peter. He didn't even know they were angels. Think Peter. Peter's letter. Entertained angels. So, some of you have entertained angels unawares. Peter said, some of you have had, angels have come to visit you, and you have entertained them, and you didn't even know they were angels. If, if they looked like different, wouldn't you be like, what is this? Or that's an angel. You didn't even know they were angels. All right, so those three came to visit Abraham. Two of them were angels. One was definitely Jesus. All right, and we'll get into that later. All right, and they seem like Regular men. Um, let me see. There are other instances. Did it? Lot. Let... The angels who came to Lot. Came to Lot. That's what I was thinking of. The angels who came. Well, those were the same two, by the way. Those were the same two. They left Abraham and went to Lot. Oh, right, right, right. But anyway, I, I had others in my mind, but I won't even bother because you have the point. So we question. were. Yes. I don't see. Yes. What about the, the, the east and Ezekiel? 
the beasts. Yeah, the beast with the fourth, the, uh, the face yeah. of the... Well, are you saying the, the heavenly beings and yes. they seem different? Yes. Okay, all right. I got a question for you. Good question, sir. Trying to redeem yourself? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. The good question. Were they made in the image of God, though? Okay. So, they weren't made in the image of God. So, anyway, so God made us in his image, but also in his likeness. So, what is this likeness? What is What word is in likeness? Like. like. He made us like him. He made us to look like him. That's image. When you look in the mirror, you see your image. And... God made us like him. So in what ways are we like him? Now think pre, before sin or after sin. Doesn't matter. Which ways are we like him? Love like him. We have the capacity for love. Yes, I agree with you. I just changed the words a little bit because some of us don't love like him. We, yeah, now. The need for relationship. Say, oh, wow. Wait. Do you think God needs relationships? Yes. You better believe it. Yes, he does. I preached that a long time ago when I was a young man that God needs about God's need. And listen, <laughs> my children are going to laugh because they know, you know, the situation, the environment they grew up in. But the whole church was like cricket, cricket, cricket. <laughs> I pre listen, but I'm telling you, God needs relationships. Yes, he does. So God. Desire for yes. Well, God is a social being. As he, If he made us like him, yeah. he made us to be social beings. Doesn't it stand to reason that he's a social being? Yeah. All right. Um, how else are we like God? Were we made like God? Somebody. Emotions? We, emotions. God gets angry. Yeah. God gets happy. God laughs. Yeah. God doesn't cry, but he does hurt. Yes, but he was a man when he did that. But thank you. You're on the right track. Absolutely. Um, give me some more. Does God get... Uh, Intimacy? Say again? Intimacy. Intimacy. That goes along with relationships. Yes. So you get the picture. God made us to look like him, and he made us to be like him. We have a lot of his attributes. There are more. Our capacity to create and to think and to reason and to make choices and to... And to understand and see big pictures all of that that came from god he didn't give that to the animals i know that in this generation they want to elevate animals to the level of being equal to humans they're absolutely not i don't care how much you love jacks okay they're absolutely not and they have brought down man to the level of an animal i'll give you any well there's so many examples i'm not even you know that's the truth and there's actually there's some I remember there's some uh, notes in here about that, so I won't go into that too deeply right now. But animals, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Facebook, but I'm gonna tell you, animals, your animals do not love you. No, they, don't. they don't love you. No, they do not. They don't love you. No. Nope. Okay. Love is Excellent. Love is of God because God is love. We have the capacity to love, as Deshaun has said. God didn't give that to animals. He didn't give animals the ability to, to create and to play. You, let me go forward because I don't listen. I'll be on that for. Let me just go forward. All right. So that was now read the note, the second note. Well, it's only it's the only note written here for 28. But um, it's the second note we're going to use tonight. God did not have to instruct. Oh, it's right here. I didn't even know. I said I knew I was going to talk about that soon. It's right here what I was thinking of when I said that's in my notes. So, go ahead. God did not have to instruct these animals to be fruitful and multiply. They are ruled by instinct. Yes. Instinct is the God instilled. Instilled. So this is talking about God told mankind, he told Adam and Eve when he created them, be fruitful and multiply. Now I know, now see, I'm, I, I'm actually, it, 
I'm thinking I need to change that note because it seems like I'm contradicting myself. So I want to rewrite that note so that it doesn't sound contradictory. When God spoke in reference to animals and said, be fruitful and multiply, he was speaking into existence a system. You understand? A system. He wasn't talking to them personally and saying, I want you to do this. He was speaking into existence a system, okay? With mankind, he wasn't speaking into existence a system. He was actually giving a command, a personal command. Animals do not, God didn't create animals to live by intellect and choice and reasoning. He created them to live by instinct. Animals live by instinct. They reproduce by instinct. In other words, contrary again to what people seem to think, um, and I got to say this in, in as delicate a way as possible for some of the things I'm thinking of. In other words, first of all, mankind, we don't have a season of reproduction. All right? You see a pretty girl. You like her, you want to talk to her, you want to get her a number, <laughs> you want to call her, and you hope to build a relationship with her, and ultimately you fall in love, and you kiss and get married, and life goes on, and you have a family, all right? That can happen at any time of your life, okay? And your season of reproduction has nothing to do with instinct. It has to do with your emotions and your physical makeup. Animals do not, see, Jax is not going to see a girl dog and be like, what? She is, <laughs> okay, Jax is not going to, Jax is not going to lust after some girl dog. Okay, Jax is not, okay, Jax is not going to be like, have you seen the dog that moved in next door? She is fine. Jax is not going to do that. Okay, <laughs> Jax is, go is governed by instinct. When a certain time of year comes around, instincts move Jax in a certain uh, direction, okay? And if he encounters, unless Jax is, yeah, okay, unless there's some reason that he can't uh, have that experience, all right? And, and um, yeah, so, and if there's a female dog, who uh, is also going through a season of reproduction, then she and that dog and Jax will unite. God created that process, okay? That's not a command to them personally. Mankind, he said, be fruitful and multiply, and you fill the earth, okay? God did create within us a process, but also we are moved by, I'm not talking about sin, we're moved by love, by attraction, by intimacy, by, you understand, that's what God wanted it to be like, okay, when sin came, we, we made everything raunchy and disgusting and dirty and filthy because we allowed, we accepted the devil and, and, and received his nature, so now we have a big mess, but that's not what God created. God created husbands and wives to love each other. One husband, one wife to love each other and to express their love in a physical way and to raise a family. That's what God created. All right. He did not put that in animals. All right. Jax has never fallen in love <laughs> and he never will. Right. <laughs> She's like, poor Jax. All right. Um, number 15 and we're ending Genesis 1. So, so somebody take 15 for me. That's verse 30. Read verse 30, please. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb to me for meat, mm -hmm. and it was so. Edmund Jr., please read the note for that verse. God made no carnivores, neither man nor beast. Young people, what does that mean? God, God made no carnivores. Yes. <laughs> No, you got it backwards. Wow. That, you did a good. You did okay. What's a carnivore, Tolliver? A meat eater. Can you believe that? God did not create 
any meat eater. So today's dinner would have been fine. <laughs> God did not create any meat eaters, not of man or beast. Not any living creature was a meat eater. Why not? Yes, Tolliver. No, no, don't. That, that's okay. Good try. I don't want you to be embarrassed, but no, that's not why. Yes. Because since there was no sin, there was no death. You're on the. You're thinking in the exact right place, but give me a little Not different any answer. Shedding of blood. You're you and Javier are right there, but give me a different answer. <laughs> what do you have to do to get me? Yeah. You gotta kill something. So you are both right. But the point I wanted to get to is to get meat, somebody has to kill something. God didn't create that. Sin did that. So God obviously wouldn't have created any carnivores. There were no meat eaters. Lions didn't eat meat or whatever that first canine was or whatever that first um, I mean, I said canine, that first feline was, or whatever the first canine was, or bovine, or whatever, okay? Nothing God created ate meat. Everything ate vegetation. Everything ate vegetation. Isn't that something? So, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so Geneva, did anybody eat eggs? Eggs. Was anybody like, I think I have some eggs today, no. chief. No, <laughs> yes. Who said, who said yes? Let me see a yes. I heard a yes. All right, who said no? No, who said no. No, why? Because that's not vegetation. An egg, yes, an egg. Yes, it's a, it doesn't, uh, when we get it, we don't allow it to become meat, okay? But its original purpose is to house life. Thank you. Everything ate vegetation. And you said that's not vegetation, which is another good answer for that. They didn't even eat eggs. God didn't create anybody to eat eggs. No bacon and eggs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's how I was like, for real? Oh, my goodness. No. Oh. <laughs> Denise was like, vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> Victory! No, just kidding. I know. <laughs> so now we're moving on to Genesis two. Wow, I feel like we've crossed a threshold. So let's keep going. Verse one. Somebody read verse one, please. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. What's my note? Oh, yes. Keep read the note, please. Now heavens is plural. Why did I put that in there? Really quickly. Yes, remember that talk we had about sometimes only in one occasion, as my son pointed out, was heaven capitalized when it referred to the firmament, all right? Every other time there was, sometimes there was heaven, sometimes there was heavens. So I just made a note that I just noticed that in this verse one, now we see um, the word heavens as plural. So, you know, I'm going to keep noticing that. The interchangeability between heaven and heavens, meaning the sky, the universe, and all of that. All right? So, um, keep reading, Geneva. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. Um, read the note, please, on verse 2. God rested as we shall rest. Hebrews 4, 3. Keep reading. The seventh day rest or Sabbath is more significant than immediately appears. God set a time clock on the evening and morning that were the first day. It has been ticking for over 6,000 years, but will not continue forever. It will soon wind down and run out at God's originally appointed time, which is soon. Yes. Amen. That says it all. Now, I do want to look at that. Hebrews 4 and 3. Let's see what that says. Edmund Jr., can you take that one? Hebrews 4, 3. Talking about rest. Oh. 
Hebrews 4, chapter 3. Mm-hmm. No, chapter 4, verse 3. For we, for we which have believed do not enter into rest, as he said. Oh, excuse me. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, as if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the earth. Okay, that's sworn in my wrath and all that. That's referring to the children of Israel in, in, in the wilderness and how they sinned against God. But what the first part is what I want to pay attention to. It said, we who believe shall enter or do enter into his rest. All right? Patterns as I preached on Sunday. Okay, God established the earth. He set a time clock on the evening and the morning of the first day. The clock has been ticking for over 6,000 years. We are approaching 7,000 years. God created the world in six days. He rested on the seventh. Um, I would not be surprised at all. In fact, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to just go there. I expect that in the 7,000th, 7,000th, 7,000th year, <laughs> that was a lot of TH. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm convinced, I fully expect that that thousand, that millennium <laughs> will be quite different to anything that we have experienced so far. All right, I believe that. Um, yeah, patterns. So let's keep going. Uh, number three, so we're in verse six now. Somebody take verse six, please. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Please read the note, daughter. Now, oh, sorry. Yes, okay. Rain did not exist. Rain did not exist. God did not create rain. Everybody's like, what? Yes, he did. Because the Bible says he sends his rain to, to rain on the, the just and unjust and Yes, the Bible does say that later after sin, because there was no unjust <laughs> before. God never intended for water to fall on us and us to get wet. That's not a perfect existence. He created a perfect environment. That's not a perfect environment. And somebody might say, well, well, how did the earth get watered and things grow? He just told us. Read that verse again, daughter, please. But there went up a mist. From the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. That's perfect. How did the earth get watered? Mist. A mist came. God is so brilliant. <laughs> Don't you see? God didn't need for like <sighs> and rain and clouds and oh my goodness and thunder and lightning and loud noise to, to water the earth. He was, he was like, I know what to do. Just to, doesn't that sound gentle? <laughs> A mist came up from the earth. And watered the whole ground. We still have a semblance of that left over today. It is not what God created to it to be. But the earth still does that every night. What do we call it? Do. do. And that's very, I always found that very interesting. That there is still do. Every, if you get up early enough as Deshaun does, you'll see do. Especially if you're walking now in city streets, you can't see anything. But especially if you're walking somewhere where there's grass and vegetation, you see hovering just above the ground at about a foot height or so do everywhere. God created a mist to come up. Ah, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I just, okay, I know where I'm going next. <laughs> God created a mist to come up and to water the earth. Um, hmm, where did this mist come? Where did this water come from? The earth is mostly water. Water just, the earth, God created so that the earth would release its own water in the form of a mist. Just a mist would come up and water the earth and dissipate whenever it was done. And that's how the earth uh, um, supported life. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? Wow, God is something else, man. My dad used to say, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Okay, um, number four. Um, daughter, can you stay with it? Number four, please. Read verse seven. 
And the Lord God formed man. I think we'll finish with this one, daughter. Start again. I just happened to look at the clock. So this will be our last one for tonight. And Go. the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Yes. Um, uh, who, let's see, who haven't I picked on much? Deshaun, could you please read the, the note on that one? No, uh, yeah, yeah, the note on that one. So that's number that's number four, the note. Four. Breathe, oh, yeah, breathe, breath of life, man became a living soul. The English word spirit comes from the Latin spiritus, which means breath. Okay, you see, God breathed the breath of life. Man became a living soul. The English word Spirit comes from the Latin, say it again, Deshaun. The Latin word spiritus. Which means, means breath. breath. Spiritus means breath. Continue with the notes, Deshaun, the first small letter I. John twenty twenty two, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Okay, this is Jesus before he ascended. He finished talking to them in John 20, 22. You don't have to turn there because I, this is the exact verse right here. It says, and when Jesus had said this, what he just said to his disciples, he what? Breathed on them. And said unto them, received ye the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. You see this, com this connection between breath and spirit. Jesus, this is exactly what he did. I'm going to show you. It's, he finished talking to his disciples. He's about to ascend back into heaven. And he says to them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And he goes, Whoo! Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's how he, that's how he um, um, dis dispensed or released the Holy Ghost to them with this <laughs> say it again son the breath of life alright son read uh, this next note uh, small double I Acts 2 and 2 and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as if a rushing mighty wind wind breath alright go ahead son and it filled all the house where they were sitting and what was taking place at that time? They were receiving the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came with the sound of wind. Wind. Breath. That's after Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Ghost and breathed. Now when the Holy Ghost arrived, it, it, he arrived with the sound of wind. Man. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's some good stuff, man. I'm telling you. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I actually, I actually don't want to stop, but I don't want to get rotten tomatoes thrown at me or boo, make him sit down. Um, want to do one more? Yes, sir. All right, let's let's do another. All right, I'm I'm hiding, I'm hiding from I'm hiding from Alex. I was trying not to see him when I said that, but I was like, but his eye, his piercing eyes came through. <laughs> okay, number nine. Let's see. Um, uh, Jarek, how about you? Number nine. That's, I'm sorry, no. Number five, which is verse nine. Please read verse nine. Verse nine. Genesis two and nine. And good, yeah. And good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I have a, an interesting note on this that you wouldn't probably think of right away, because you're probably thinking of the tree of good and knowledge of good and evil. But, uh, Jared, can you please read my note? Actually, that's a big word in there. Let's see if, but you're a great reader, so let's see. You'll probably manage it. Yes. There are verses all through the scriptures. All throughout the scriptures. All throughout the scriptures that is that indicate that beauty. Okay, wait. You gotta remember what we talked about in school. You gotta look at your punctuation. Try it again. You can do it. 
Try it again. Start over, okay? God cares about aesthetics. There are verses all through the Bible, all throughout scriptures that indicate that beauty and quality are of high importance to God. Today as much as ever. Okay. Today as much as ever. And of course, I refer to Malachi 3, 6, which says, you should know it by now. I quote it so much. What does Malachi 3, 6 say? I quoted it this past Sunday. I'm God and I change not. So this, this if you notice in, the, in that verse 9, we see that aesthetics, by the way, young people, aesthetics means beauty. Okay. God cares about aesthetics. He cares about beauty. beauty. He wants you to look beautiful. He wants you to look your best. Okay? He wants you to dress your best and be clean. He wants your home to be beautiful and clean. It doesn't mean... Now, there are some rich people who have amazing homes. It doesn't mean that your home has to be of the same value as everybody else's, but your home is supposed to... Young people, did you know... I'm going to interrupt that sentence to say this. Did you know God wants your room to be clean and kept nice? Huh, grandbaby? I mean, did you know God wants your room to be clean and kept nice? Seriously, did you know that? God cares about aesthetics. He cares about beauty. He wants the sanctuary beautiful. He wants your house beautiful. He wants your... You, you wouldn't believe. Wait a minute. God wants my car to be neat. Now listen, I understand that some people are neater than others. What I'm saying is, you will see all through Scripture, if you read the entire Bible, God is always talking about how things look. The quality of them. The color of the God always requires the best. Did you ever notice that? Give me the best. When you make it, make it beautiful. Use the prettiest colors and clean. And he said, when the people come before me, make sure they clean themselves up. Remember I talked about that? He said, what did he tell them to do with their clothes, Deshaun? Do you remember? Um, when he said that they were, they he said, before they come to me, he said, wash your clothes. Can you believe that? God said, wash your clothes before you come to me. So this whole nonsense about Jesus said, come as you are. First of all, the Bible doesn't even say that any place. And secondly, God said, wash your clothes before you come to me. Now, I have a question for you. So if there's a, a street person, maybe on drugs, alcohol, whatever, homeless. If there's a street person and they're very dirty because they live in the streets and they, they want to come to church. Are we supposed to say, oh, no, you ain't coming in here. You got to wash your clothes to come before God. Is that what I'm talking about? Yeah. No. God, in that case, they can come as they are so that we can minister to them. But now let's say they get saved. Are they? Do you think they should continue to come to church like that for the rest of their lives? Like yeah. God said, I can come as I am. Yeah. Really? No. God said, wash your clothes. He said, wash your clothes. What did he say? Oil yourself. God cares about beauty and quality in his sanctuary. Um, let me look at this note again. Mm -hmm. The reason I included that because we have, we have propagated such a false impression of God in this generation. We, just, we seem to think the Old Testament. I don't even know why people bother even quoting from the Old Testament. We act like the Old Testament is, doesn't even matter anymore. We quote things from the Old Testament when it suits us. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's in the Old Testament. The same place where God said, um, wash your clothes and, and, and beautify yourself and keep my sanctuary beauty, beautiful and holy. The same place. Old Testament. All right. So God cares about aesthetics. All right. Now let's look at verse, I mean, uh, the note B, please. Jarek, you can go ahead. The tree of life, Revelation 22. Okay, tree of life. Now, the reason I put that in there, he refers to in the garden, let's see, in the garden, what verse was that? Yeah, in the garden there was also the tree of life. Let's finish with this. Turn to Revelation, actually I didn't point out the exact verse. I just made a reference that you'll find that in Revelation 22. So on your own personal time, 
Just look at Revelation 22 and you're going to find that the tree of life still exists. It still exists. It's in heaven. And we are still going to have access to it. Let's stop here. It's been a fun night for me. Symphony, I'm going to ask you to please come and just close us out in prayer. Would you do that? Yes. All right. Young people, did you have fun? Yes, sir. I had a lot of I had a lot of fun. I did. I love you all. I want to tell you that. I love you all. Not just you young people. Everybody in the room. The old people. Yeah, even the old folk. Come on, Symphony. Who said that to me? You? I love you too, my friend. Okay, I'm going to step out of the camera. You're going to say goodnight to everybody. I mean, you're going to pray and then say goodnight to everybody, okay? Okay. Father God, my Lord in heaven, I pray that we will receive what we have learned today. I pray that I pray that we won't just think that the Old Testament is just is just is just nothing and I pray that I pray that we will have a good night and that we and that we will thank you for the things that you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. I hope you have a good night. Don't leave so fast.